welcome back to another video. We are going to be painting today. So it's probably going to be another animal or nature <laughs> subject. I'm sorry, I'm a little bit like a broken record. It's what I tend to drift towards and that is why I tend to choose that. Um, if you do have suggestions of what you'd prefer me to actually um, paint or draw, then do drop them in the comments down below. But I found this canvas board, it's still wrapped up, but I have a couple of these and I thought I haven't got many things left out in this moving process. And so I thought, let's dive into something that I can access and that's my acrylic paints. The only problem is I can only access these three brushes. All my other brushes are packed away somewhere and I cannot find them. This is actually a, an old makeup brush, which I've used for something, so it's a bit stiffer. Um, and then I've got these two quite long handled brushes. Um, I mean, they're not the best. I don't envisage me getting much great quality detail in this painting, but we are just going to have some fun um kind of try out some base coats of different colors um and just just see whether we can create something nice so i'm thinking for this video i'm going to predominantly be using my windsor and newton galleria acrylics maybe a few de la Ronis mixed in there and then if i'm struggling for a certain color or something like that i have my arteza acrylics and my liquitex acrylics as well um so i have a very broad range of acrylics at hand today um but we will predominantly be using these windsor and newton ones so let's just jump straight into this i'm going to sketch it out apply a base coat and then start painting the finer details and colors on top of that As you can see here I am actually applying an underpainting so this is not something I do often I do it a little bit here and there um, but I was recently inspired by um, a few youtubers who have been incorporating underpaintings into their artwork and it kind of wanted me to revisit it a little bit and play around I am still learning and I appreciate that I'm not you know I'm not great at everything I'm still practicing I'm still learning and art is always just a learning process um, and I'm just really appreciative that you know those that watch this channel or are just joining now or have been subscribed for years you know I really appreciate that you stick around whilst I'm learning um, I do use my YouTube as a way of expressing and showing my artwork but also to kind of learn and to, to bounce ideas off one another so I'm always really welcome of you know hints and tips or um, you know discussions in the, in the comments below anyway back onto the artwork so yes I decided to do an underpainting I decided to make it this magenta colour because my reference was quite a cold reference and I wanted to warm it up a little bit and so I thought this warm deep colour in the background would really bring in some depth so I, like I mentioned, I don't use underpaintings very often. Now, my understanding of why I use an underpainting is to kind of bring the colours together, bring them more cohesive, um, add a little bit of depth, and also just add a colour in there that kind of, I don't know, just change the, changes the atmosphere of your painting. Um, now, I'm going to read a little bit from RileyStreet.com. They're an art supply shop, but they, they really explain underpaintings really, really well. Um, probably better than I would ever explain them, so I thought I'd read a little bit from them. So, underpaintings serve many purposes and can be used to achieve a variety of different things. It can give your work more depth and more dimension. It can create levels of contrast, better enhance areas of light, darks and shadows, and it's a technique that all artists should be aware of and should at the very least try. Some artists use underpaintings as a blueprint for the image they intend to paint, as a base layer as not to have, a, have to stare to, at a blank canvas, as a way to build contrast tonal values in their paintings, creating dark and light portions that will make those areas of the canvas lighter or darker once you apply paint on top. 
and as an outline for future colour placements. Underpainting serves a variety of different purposes, all of which can make the end result more exciting and appealing. I thought that was just a really nice explanation. It does go on, so do go and you know search search for that. Um, but I do feel like it really brought all my colours together. It warmed the painting up. The reference photo is very very cold. Um, it's a seaside photo of two um, seagulls on a rock, and although I'm replicating those colours, I'm, I'm matching the colours with my painting. It just made it different to the reference photo in a nice way. I thought it was just. It was just a nicer way anyway. Um, but yeah, I just thought I'd use this painting as a little bit of a kind of just a practice, uh, a sketch almost. I don't know, if you, some of you might not call this a sketch, but um, to me it's quite a sketchy painting. You know, I've not painted right to the edge. It's, it's literally just me practicing. Although in hindsight, I wish I had painted right to the edge just because I actually really, really like the painting. Um, I mean, I could add a little border to it, I guess, um, for display purposes, but um, it was really, really fun to try. I forgot how much I really like acrylics. These um, Windsor Newton Gallery, I've had these for a long time. I think they were actually my mum's previously, the really tatty looking um, aluminium barreled paints. They are definitely my mum's old ones that I have probably stolen over the years. <laughs> um, and then the more plastic bottled um, ones are, are the newer design of their bottles. Um, the, I must admit the consistency is a little bit more runny, uh, less viscous on the newer type Windsor Newton acrylics, but um, they perform the same. I don't think there's much difference in it. Um, but they're really lovely colours, really lovely paints, and I kind of use them as more of a glaze. So I put down my lower colour. As you can see, there's pink still popping through there, and I think that's just a really, it's just really lovely. I think I'm definitely going to be trying this more and more, so you will see more videos on this. Um, but I, I kind of laid down the, the bottom layer and shadows and highlights and then I actually watered down my paint enough to add it as a glaze like this this dark color that I'm adding here is actually a glaze as you can see I'm putting it on you can still see that that um, kind of beigey color underneath and the white shining through um, and I think that's a really nice way of adding color but adding it as a shading rather than a block color um, for this painting but I think this was really fun to try. I'm really excited to keep doing these kind of sketchy paintings. Um, please let me know in the comments if you if you've enjoyed watching this. If you've enjoyed a little bit of backstory on the on the underpainting and whether you actually use these underpaintings. Does it does it serve you well? Are you willing to try them? Um, I'd love to know. So do do talk to me down there. Um, I love hearing all about it. And. Yeah, I think that's it from me. I've, I've enjoyed doing this. I'm going to let you watch the rest of it and watch the little close-up at the end. But thank you very much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit that thumbs up if you have. Subscribe if you're new here and you want to see some more, because there will be plenty more to come. <laughs>